Hello there. Uh, I was listening to Rodney and Alex and their podcast that they have for the Jira Life the other day, and they brought up some questions or some thoughts regarding groups and teams. And I realized that I have some opinions on my own, so I'm thinking I should share them with you. So, the way Alex and Rodney discussed this one, and I will add a link to their their amazing podcast and also their amazing YouTube channel uh, where they discuss everything about Jira. Um, but the way they discussed it, they discussed what is the purpose of having teams, um, uh, where Rodney felt that it was very good that you could assign teams, uh, so you can assign tasks to teams. Uh, while Alex then felt that it's better to have it assigned uh, to a single user because of accountability. And I think they're both right, and I think they are talking from different perspectives. So, from a strategic perspective, uh, when you are doing larger plans, you assign things to teams. That, that makes absolutely sense, because it's a large body of work that hasn't been broken down anymore, and so you assign it to a team and let them sort it out. That's where you can assign it to a team, and that one is perfectly all right. But within a team, to have something assigned to the team is the same thing as not having it assigned at all. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever for me. So when you get something that is large that you need to break down, then the team breaks it down and they uh, create them as different work tasks. And whoever have uh, the time at the moment will pick one of those tasks and they will build it. And, and they will sort this one out in accordance to in what order do we need to build these things. And also towards what goal are we building. So if you have a scrum setup, for example, then you have a sprint goal. Uh, or if you do a Kanban, then you probably have like a monthly goal or something like that. Uh, or you have a product goal that you want to to work towards. So you pick the, the items that you want to do in the order you want to do it. And I also want to make it clear that to me, having, uh, for example, if I have a task assigned to me, it does not mean that I will go off in a corner and sit alone and I will be like uh, Gollum you know, screaming that don't touch my precious. Uh, it, it will just mean that I will be the one driving that uh, task and I will collaborate with everyone in the team to get the help I want uh, or need to actually complete it. And I think this one also works if you do a pair program setup, because if you do pair program, yes, there are two people who are responsible to actually make it happen, but you can just as easily just put one in the driver's seat and saying, for now, uh, I own this one and I will be the driver. And then you can reassign it if you feel that that was very difficult for us to work with. And then you can have the other person. So from a team perspective, uh, anytime uh, you have something that has been uh, decided for you from outside a team, it makes perfect sense that you can assign it to a team. Our team has been assigned this body of work. But anything inside, you should have individuals that actually do the work. And it doesn't matter if the whole team are doing mob programming, pair programming, doesn't matter. Put one person in the driver's seat. And if you do mob programming, yeah, then shift it every 10 or 15 minutes when you when you change the person who's actually doing the code if you want to. But just have someone that is responsible for it. And the reason, and I agree with Alex on this one, not having accountability, not having someone who is actually responsible for something, I think that is uh, a terrible way to work because consensus work does not work. Because in any collaboration you have, you will always have people that take a leadership position. And those people should be the one that take accountability because they are usually the one that drives the, the work itself. So that's how, what I feel about uh, assignment when it comes to should we use teams or individuals. And I say we should use both, depending on if you are on an uh, operating level, so you are actually doing the work, or if you're on a strategic level where you're actually planning the work. Now, the second point is, and this one also came up a little bit, they talked a little bit about groups compared to teams and what teams and groups are currently in the Atlassian platform. So we start with groups. Uh, groups is a horrible implementation in my, my opinion because they are black holes. Uh, they're, they're basically set up uh, from a very old area where you have like 
the same, what should we call it, uh, access uh, setup that needs to be controlled by administrators, uh, kind of like to do in SAP or in our Active Directories, where you are assigned roles or groups uh, to actually get access to things. And at one point, when you had fairly small organizations, that probably worked. But when you are in a larger setting, let's say you have 10,000 users or 5,000 users, and they have hundreds of teams, and each of them will have then hundreds of groups, then you will basically have a full-time team of maybe five or ten people would just manage the onboarding and offboarding and assigning of groups for these people. And that is not where I think most administrators want to be, because it's boring as hell to sit there and assign groups to people especially since we know that groups are not controllable in any way. So unlike, for example, in Microsoft, uh, where you have something that you set in the Active Directory there, if you're an Azure AD, uh, you cannot really take that, that group that you have and apply it any way you want. But this is exactly what we can do in Jira. So if I position someone in a group, I have no control of what projects will actually assign that group to a role in their project. So that means that uh, I have no idea where these groups that I create and manage will be used, and the people that use the groups have no idea who's actually in the, those groups. So the group implementation is not a very good one, and I think anyone that are sane enough have moved away from groups as much as they can. For us, for example, we are using the AD, and we only sync groups from AD based on our organization. Uh, we don't do any local groups because we can't control them and we have and the, the, the quality of these groups are very bad because we are not part of the onboarding offboarding process and we don't get the information. I think this is the same for, for many organizations out there that we have ghosts in our groups, a lot of them. Uh, so where do we go with groups? And for me, I don't think groups uh, really have a place anymore. Uh, I think they can be, uh, I think Teams is better implementation of it and maybe we can just make the, the groups work the same way as Teams. So they are user created, so anyone can create groups themselves and they can manage the people in those groups and they should only be available in the projects. Uh, so you can, you can group things there. Um, but Let's move over to Teams before I continue with the groups there. So the Teams implementation has always been terrible in, in Jira. Uh, Teams has, even though it's the main focus, uh, the, the way it has been designed and the way I think it should still be designed is that Teams are basically living within a project. So you don't have Teams running around in multiple projects in most cases, unless you have that horrible situation where you have team members working in multiple projects or Teams at the same time. So the implementation has always been, if you have team members, you manage them in your project. And that one has worked quite fine until we come over to other products like your service management, where you usually have the teams within a service management product can be quite a lot. And the reason for that is that we don't have the ability to share tickets between multiple products, a design decision I do not understand and I really don't like. So what happens is we get these big monolith projects because everyone wants to be in the same bucket so they can work together. So you have the first, second and third tier basically working in the same product, or at least the first and the second one. The way they are shifting now, they are making now, now we have the teams field so we can actually assign uh, things using the teams, which in the past we just created a custom field for and we just manually added teams there so people could do exactly the same thing. So now they have lifted out that functionality and they place it in their own uh, area, so to speak, the teams. Uh, you can now create teams functionally. And before we could do that in plans, as it now be called, the old advanced roadmaps, um, but now they have moved that one out as well, uh, or at least partially, you can still do local teams in advanced roadmaps. But we now have the new Teams uh, setting where you can actually create a Teams page, basically, and assign users to that team. And I think that is awesome. That is a good first start because if you can create Teams uh, and you can control who's in that team, 
we are basically moving that functionality closest to the users, the people that actually work in those teams. And they can now manage who is actually in their team on their own. So we now have Rodney's view there, so you can now create an Epic, for example, or if you have a hierarchy that have levels above Epic, then you can sign those to teams. And then the teams themselves can then break it down uh, within their teams. So I think that is fine. Uh, there are areas where we have situations where a team does not really make sense. So they are not part of the team, so they are actually a group of people. And this is where we then have this discrepancy. So this is where I would like to see groups going as well. So I would like to see that we can create groups the same way as we can create teams. And I would like to see them actually using uh, the same setup that they have in, uh, or they used to have in advanced roadmaps. So you can create other a local group that you can have just in your project, or you can create a group and you can make it accessible to other people. So then you can use it in other projects as well. So you don't need to recreate the wheel uh, all over again. But for this to work, and this is the same thing for teams, I think. So you need to have responsibility uh, actually assigned to it. And that is so we can um, can manage from an administrative perspective to see if this team, for example, or this group have a lot of inactive users. They haven't been doing their job of actually removing inactive users. Uh, and they should also be able to get notified uh, if something is happening in their team of that kind. So as soon as someone gets inactivated, the person who owns that team, or maybe the whole team, I don't really care, if, I don't think matters really, but yes, so they get notified. There is someone in your project uh, or in your team or in your group that is now inactivated. You need to take action to remove that person. And I would also like to see that we have automations for that. So uh, we can set up global automations. So any team that have inactive users, uh, we can automate to remove them. Uh, so no one have inactive users because uh, if you have a situation where you, for example, create local accounts rather than having it connected to an active directory, if you have people that leave uh, your company, for example, but they still have access, or if you have consultants and their contract has ended, and if they still have access, then that's a security problem because uh, then they will still be able to log in and they can still see things. Now, obviously, that doesn't happen if you inactivate it, but you need to uh, have that process then, so you make sure that they get inactivated. So, in conclusion then, I think that Teams is uh, on its way to becoming something useful. I think right now it is more of a easy way to manage a custom field, and I hope that they will take this a little bit further because I know that there are things that we need uh, to manage in our teams that could be good to have there. So for example, I would very much like to see that we could use, for example, the Confluence team calendars uh, to actually have who is working when, uh, who is on sick leave, who is on vacation and stuff like that. And that could also be tied into uh, other aspects like our SLAs and all kinds of things that we can have. And I'm also a good proponent of having uh, resource management. So if you have that horrible situation where you actually split between two teams, then you should be able to say that I'm working 50% in this team and 50% in the other team, because that's very important when it comes to estimations, for example, or assigning works or, or planning things. How do I know how many people are actually available for me in the next period? We used to have something like that in advanced roadmaps before, but for some reason they removed it and there is absolutely no resource planning today uh, in here. So it would be good to have that on an individual level also in the teams if we could have it. So lots of ramblings. Uh, I like the teams uh, uh, vision or the, the way they are taking teams right now. I absolutely despise and hate groups, local groups, because uh, of their implementation. That makes them black holes and a security risk. And I would like to see both of these moving forward uh, to be more useful. So we can choose uh, which one is the best for us. Do we want to set up a sales team that we can assign to different things in our, in our, in our projects? Or do we want to have a sales group 
or do we want to have a marketing group or a stakeholder group? Uh, just so we can choose which one we will have. And I think for me, I will go the Teams route. Uh, I will uh, use the Teams route uh, as long as I can use it to assign to different roles and things like that. And because it is user management uh, or it is managed by the users themselves. They can create these teams and they can manage them. And I think that is where you want to have that uh, functionality. I don't think as an administrator I should sit and micromanage roles or, or groups uh, for people because they will have groups for everything. In a team you can have 10 groups um, just for designers, stakeholders, anything that you want. And that's a nightmare to sit and micromanage. So that's my opinion on the matter. Uh, what's yours? Do you think groups functions well or do you hate teams? Or do you think both of them can just go out the window or both of them are great the way they are? Please sign off in the comments and until next time, have an awesome day and have a great week.